Uh, Prince Albert. I, yes, Edward did. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I rise to speak to our Conservative motion that, among other things, calls on the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Katie Telford, to testify about Beijing's election interference in 2019 and 2021. After all, Katie Telford, as the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, is a critical witness to get to the heart of this scandal, namely, what does the Prime Minister know, when did he learn about it, and what did he do or fail to do about Beijing's election interference. While this motion is a test for this government, it is also a test for the NDP. Because on three occasions, the NDP at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee blocked Katie Telford Shame. from appearing before the committee. Oh, shame. And so the NDP has a choice. They can continue to do the bidding for this corrupt Liberal government, propping up this corrupt Prime Minister, or they can work with us to protect the sanctity of a ballot box and the integrity of our elections by working to get the answers that Canadians deserve about Beijing's election interference in not one, but two federal elections. We'll soon find out what choice they make. Madam Speaker, the key question that must be asked is, what does the Prime Minister have to hide? Since November, when reports of Beijing's interference in the 2019 and 21 elections came to light, the Prime Minister has refused to come clean about what he knows. For two weeks, the Prime Minister was silent. Then, the Prime Minister broke his silence in an effort to sow confusion and avoid accountability. The Prime Minister used carefully chosen words to say that he was not briefed about candidates receiving money from China. How convenient, because no one was ever saying that candidates received money from China. It's not as if Beijing writes checks and hands them out to candidates. It's an absurdity, Madam Speaker. What is at issue is a campaign of interference by Beijing in two federal elections. And on that issue, the Prime Minister has refused to answer the most basic of questions. He's refused to say how many times he was briefed. He's even refused to acknowledge that he had been briefed, even though it is now well established that the Prime Minister had been frequently briefed about Beijing's election interference. Indeed, the Prime Minister's own national security adviser, when she testified at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, acknowledged that the Prime Minister had been briefed frequently. In a desperate attempt to change the channel, the Prime Minister has engaged in pathetic attacks, including even going so far as to outrageously claim that those who want to get to the bottom of Beijing's interference, those who would dare to hold this Prime Minister to account for Beijing's attack on our democracy, are undermining democracy. Same. Madam Speaker, it is Beijing interfering in two federal elections that is undermining democracy, and it is a prime minister who has turned a blind eye to interference who is undermining democracy. Madam Speaker, the prime minister has shut down calls for an independent public inquiry. He has ordered Liberal MPs on the Procedure and House Affairs Committee to use every trick in the book 
to impede the work of that committee to get to the bottom of Beijing's interference, including blocking the production of relevant documents, shielding key PMO officials and former ministers and current ministers, now culminating in a shameful filibuster that has gone on for more four days and nearly 24 hours to shield the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff from having to come to committee. Shameful. Madam Speaker, taken together, the actions of the Prime Minister are not the actions of a transparent Prime Minister. They're not the actions of a Prime Minister who is concerned about Beijing's election interference. They are the actions of a Prime Minister who has something to hide. They are the actions of a Prime Minister who is engaged in a cover-up. Madam Speaker, Beijing's interference in the 2019 and 21 elections is not speculative. It is well documented. Even in the limited disclosure to the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, that interference is evident. For example, a February 21, 2020 daily intelligence brief prepared by the PCO observed that Beijing orchestrated, quote, subtle but effective interference networks in the 2019 election, end of quote. Subtle but effective interference networks. And the Prime Minister received that PCO briefing, according to his national security advisor. During the 2021 election, a September 13, 2021 open data analysis of the rapid response mechanism of Global Affairs Canada observed an, an online disinformation campaign on online uh, uh, social media uh, sites of those affiliated with the Beijing regime targeting the Conservative Party generally and also targeting individual Conservative candidates, including the then Conservative Member of Parliament, now defeated Conservative Member of Parliament, Kenny Chu. And that open data analysis further observed that that disinformation campaign had, quote, grown in considerable scale, end of quote. And then there are the reports from the Globe and Mail and Global News based upon their review of CSIS and other security and intelligence documents that reveal a campaign of interference by Beijing. It begs the question, in the face of that interference, what did the Prime Minister do about it? It appears that he did nothing about it. After all, no arrests have been made, no diplomats have been expelled, and the Prime Minister kept Canadians in the dark. And Canadians would still be kept in the dark, but for whistleblowers and the work of Global News and the Globe and Mail. CSIS advised the Prime Minister that in response to foreign interference, the policy of the government should be one of transparency and sunlight, and that such interference should be made known to the public. The Prime Minister has done the opposite of this. He kept Canadians in the dark, and now he is trying to bury the truth with a smokescreen, uh, including a so-called special rapporteur who he appoints, who reports to him, who turns out to be a family friend and is a member of the Beijing-funded Trudeau Foundation, someone who is hardly independent, and a secret committee with secret evidence and secret conclusions redacted by the PMO. Hardly transparency and sunlight. And so, Madam Speaker, it is why we have put forward this motion, because Canadians deserve transparency and sunlight. It's time to end liberal obstruction. It's time to end the liberal cover-up. It's time to get answers. And that starts with hearing from the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff. Yep. If the Prime Minister really had nothing to hide, 
he would support transparency and sunlight. He would support this motion. Thank you, Madam.